welcome everybody to uh, our third, I don't know, third edition of our ongoing Corona special uh, of the Geek Dad Report. The one show dedicated, formulated, sport, specially created into uh, bringing you all the things you need to know about the world of Corona. No, I'm joking. Yeah. The Geek Dad Report was officially canceled like a long time ago. This is just me and Ryan trying to find our ways through the uh, through the coronavirus pandemic of uh, 2020. Especially with the severe lack of nerdy and geeky things to talk about. You know so, what? Uh, I'm, I'm Brian, by the way. The host is with the absolute Moses. Yes, and I am Brian. Uh, I'm also a host. Um, I don't know feeling the mostest, but I'm I'm definitely feeling something. You I, know what? I feel I think, like present. I think nowadays it's not good to say you have the mostest because then people were like, "What? The mostest coronavirus? No, I don't have the mostest coronavirus. I hope not." Mm. But uh, you know what's funny? I don't know if you ever think about it, but do you realize that we literally ended our show like, like the week before coronavirus canceled fucking everything? Because we're psych- we we have that mental foresight. I'm just glad nobody has blamed us for the coronavirus. Yeah. Well, neither of us were. I mean, I did go to that one China thing. I just but... mean like. Because we canceled the show and somehow angered the podcast god. I mean, we didn't have yeah. a huge audience, but it is possible, Ryan, that one person in that audience was a you know fucking all nipping it being that decided, you know what, if the show's over, then everybody's gonna get the coronavirus. Yeah, I think you've been reading American Gods, and um, I, I think you might be going a little bit too into that. I mean, I've been watching a lot of Marvel movies and, like, Thor movies and stuff. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of in this weird, like, maybe we only have, like, one super, super fan. But that super, super fan has magical powers. And has cursed us all to a fucking lifetime of misery and suffering. We've, we've been watching a whole bunch of different stuff. And uh, I actually rewatched uh, all three Matrix movies. <laughs> oh, nice. Ooh, that's a good one. I haven't, I gotta put that on the list. I've been watching all kinds of rando things. Yeah, well, you got to remember, though, the Matrix movies, like, the first one you're watching, you're like, yeah, you know, the Matrix. The second one you're watching, you're like, yeah. okay, yeah. And then the the third one, you're just like... What the fuck is going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The second one, listen, all I'll say about the second Matrix movie is that movie gets a lot of the grief because the third one was, wasn't very good, but that highway chase scene is still one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah. That was pretty sweet. Even Fat but, Morpheus, like when he does his like crane thing over the, when he like does a flip over the semi, where he's got the sword. Yeah. So awesome. And he's like, that's all slow motion. I mean, he almost blots out the sun because he's a big man at this point. Of the slow motion stunts, you know. Yeah. But God, that third one, I, so I was bad. just barely paying attention, honestly, throughout it's the whole movie. So bad. Uh, yeah. I rewatched it when I had my wisdom tooth out like 15 that's years that's ago. Why I I couldn't even remember, like, what happened. Like, I remember in the third one, like, yeah, they stopped fighting. But I, I literally had forgotten every tiny aspect of that movie. Dude, this uh, is, so this has been quarantine. So me and the family, we've been watching, I think we I talked about it in the, the last episode, when was, I don't know, June, I think we did. Our last Corona update. Um, yeah. We, uh, <laughs> and if you're new to this, we're not actually updating the world about Corona or like giving case numbers or anything. We're just updating the world on what we've been up to during the coronavirus and hopefully trying to put a little smile on your face. If you're watching this to help you get through the sh- fucking shit hole of a year. Oh, it's yeah. the worst. But uh, anyway, but yeah, we've been watching. So we've been watching the Marvel, all the Marvel movies. We watched uh, Avengers infinity war last night. So we got two left. So we're trying to figure out what to watch next. But um, I did like a little, one of the things that, uh, one of the shitty things about coronavirus, everybody who likes to travel is known, is that you aren't traveling fucking anywhere. So we just had to, me and the missus were supposed to go to San Francisco this last weekend, and uh, we had to cancel that. And so we still had the time off, but we ended up finding a cool little, like, cowboy town in Washington that was, uh, you know, practicing social distancing with all the masks and stuff, and we were able to rent a hotel room um, and pretty much just kind of hang on the hotel room. We did go whitewater, or whitewater rafting, uh, inner tubing down a river, which yeah. was pretty fun. Um, if anybody's looking for like, I need to get out of the house, but I need to do something that's socially distancing safe. I would recommend going on an air tube ride. Cause you don't run into anybody like, 
you're on the river, you're out in the out, out in the open, and like you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, we, we watched. We were. So- but here's here's what coronavirus here's what the corona pandemic has done to movie watching because I've already I've literally seen everything new. Like we go through. I don't know if anybody else has like this problem, but I go through all my different services and I've watched. I've seen everything. I'm like I've yeah. seen all this. So now we're just like. What random thing do we just want to watch? So when we were for so for the three days we were, you know, trapped in a hotel room, trapped. Um, we uh, <laughs> get your mind out of the gutter. Uh, when we had free time, we <laughs> yeah, no kids. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Mm. When we had some free time, we watched most of the Umbrella Academy season two, which is really good. And then these are these are this is a list of the movies we were watching. We watched Last of the Mohicans. Good we watched one. Jaws. We watched Swordfish. <laughs> we watched The Meg. Wait, so this is all within that time period. Yes. And then we got really mad because I couldn't get HBO to Max to work on my Roku that we brought. So we couldn't watch fucking Deep Blue Sea. Which I got a bone to pick with HBO Max. Fuck you and fuck your app. It sucks ass. Like... Well- they you canceled that, HBO Go, so you can't watch HBO Go. If you have the Comcast Infinity app, they won't allow you to watch it on a Roku if you're not in your own home network. And right now, Roku, uh, HBO Max, you can only download it on Google Play devices and Apple devices. Yeah. Yeah, we tried getting it on our um, our Fire TV. and Because nope. we were like, oh, HBO... Uh, not working and we couldn't find the app and then i had to look it up like yeah they they couldn't make an agreement with amazon so you can't yeah, watch I, it on fire anymore you know i i do have so i have my apple tv which i don't use very much because i don't know if i talked to you about this but i got that sonos you know dolby atmos system well hbo it, apple tv doesn't like to stream dolby atmos unless you do it in a very specific way which doesn't work for the sonos so I hardly watch anything on my Apple TV anymore, but yeah. I can get HBO Max. So the only time I've watched HBO Max is on my Apple TV, but it was just kind of obnoxious. It's like, how are you going to launch a new streaming service that you're going to cut out? I mean, I'm not a huge Amazon Fire Stick fan, but a lot of, I, I know a lot of people love it and they use it. And there's a ton of subscribers to that you know device. And same with the Roku. How are you going to cut out like probably 50 or 60% of, maybe even more, probably it's more like, probably like 70% of the market. Mm-hmm. To not get your fucking streaming service, HBO Max, get yeah. your shit together. Usually, when you launch a new uh, thing, you want as much uh, access as possible. Uh, well, but apparently, they didn't feel that. Way. And then people were confused about the difference between HBO Now, HBO Go, and HBO Max. So instead of just explaining it or making it all one, just making it one service, they're like, "No, no, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna delete all the other apps just randomly." So if you yeah. only watch HBO, if you had HBO Go or HBO Now and you subscribe to it on your Roku, that app got deleted and now you have no way to watch HBO. Yeah, pretty much. That's idiots. Just how they roll with Fucking it. idiots. Yeah. Well, and thankfully, we were starting to watch that uh, Perry Mason, so that's why my wife Ooh, and I... Is that good? It was, it was dark. interesting. But I heard it's really good. Really dark. Um, it kind of doesn't make sense. Um, but, I mean, it's better than nothing, I Yeah, guess. Let, me, let me know what you think about it uh, when you're done, because I might give it a watch, because we just finished, we're finishing up Umbrella Academy. Um, the new season of Lucifer drops next week, so I'm excited about that. But um, And I still got to get caught up on the final, this last season of um, Yellowstone. Yeah, we're 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 caught up on Yellowstone. I think we still have like three or four episodes left on Umbrella Academy. Second season's really good so far. Yeah, I'm really I'm enjoying not. it. We only got one episode left, but it's been really good. Uh, I, I finished Doom Patrol. That was an interesting second season. It was really good, but it was really short too. It was only nine episodes, which was weird. Yeah. Uh, so, um, what else have we? I mean, I've been reading a lot. Same. We've just been watching like random stuff, like Beecham House on. PPS, <laughs> you know, so masterpiece theater. We've just been finding rando movies and watching them. We're just like, what's this? I don't know. Let's watch it. Oh, I do want to give a quick recommendation since we're on the topic before I forget. Uh, oh, huh. There is, I found a streaming. Well, it's not a streaming service. It's a, it's an app, but you can also get it online. It's called 
see what I can find it here. Where'd it go? Oh, I, we totally came prepared. Yeah, no, this was totally last second here. Um, just Watch. It's called the Just Watch app. Or you can go to justwatch.com. And it's spelled mm-hmm. just like it sounds, justwatch.com. Okay. So what justwatch.com does, or the app, the only difference is the app you have to set up an account, which it's free. I, I just haven't done it yet. Um, so what's cool is you can put in on the, on the app, you can put in all your different streaming services, like what you have and your cable provider and stuff. And it tells you what's streaming on each of those services. And the best part is, is you can go to the search bar. So let's say you're, that's how I knew we wanted to watch Deep Blue Sea, right? We're like, I haven't seen that in forever. Let's watch, you know, the deepest, the bluest. My hat is like a shark's fin. Let's watch that movie. And uh, I'm like, well, you know, I wonder what it's on. And so you go to the search bar and you put in Deep Blue Sea and then it'll tell you what it's streaming on, whether it's streaming on a TV channel or like a specific cable or one of the, you know, Netflix, Amazon. They even have some streaming services I've never even heard of before. So I don't know if they're like out of out of country streaming services or, you know, some like lesser known ones. But uh, yeah. it has been, dude, it has saved me so much time because we're sitting down trying to figure out a movie. Plus they aggregate it. So they're like, hey, here's all the new movies that just launched this week on all streaming services. Oh. And, and so you can look through it and see what's on it. Dude, it is a freaking lifesaver. I don't know if it's a publicly traded company, but I might buy stock because I feel like this thing, it's basically like a TV guide, but for streaming services. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It sounds like a TV guide, but, you know, for a modern TV guide, well, basically. I mean, how many nights have you been like, let's see what's new on Amazon? Okay, let's, let's watch something. Well, let's go to Amazon Prime. Okay, let's see what's new. Nothing here. Let's go to Netflix. Let's see what's new. Oh, nothing here. Let's go to HBO. Uh, what's you know, new? We've had family movie night where we spend the first 15 minutes flipping through shit. Well, and now, especially like, you know, with, with like Disney, you know, I, I, I really like the Disney app, but it doesn't do a very good job promoting a lot of stuff on it. Right. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, Hey, we have 20,000 things, but you got to kind of find them. <laughs> and so it's like, all right, well, well. And like my, my kids and my wife want to start watching the X-Men movies, but they only have X-Men apocalypse and X-Men days future past. And I said, no, they have the original, they have the first one too. The original X-Men. Oh, you have that on yeah. the, uh, I don't know if they have X-Men two. Okay, because I wanted to do it in order, but I thought they had only dropped, like, the last two. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. So. Well, let's see, Ryan. Let's hear Hang on a second. Let's go to let's go to uh, justwatch.com. So, really did cool you guys – I'm assuming you guys watch Hamilton. I haven't watched it yet. Okay, so you're looking for – hang on. X-Men. Let's watch X-Men Part 2. Let's just go X-Men. All right, don't you want First Class? You want to watch First Class? All right, First Class, X-Men First Class is available now on HBO. It's available to stream on HBO. Yeah, so it's not, even, it's not on Disney Plus yet. So it's probably because a lot of these shows have um, you know deals with other other providers. So Disney, Disney seems to not be making any more um, deals with other providers. So it seems like once they're out, they're just pulling them. But like we were trying to watch... I had, I luckily I owned Ant Man and the Wasp, but we were watching all the Disney movies, you know, all the Marvel movies in order. And but when we got to Ant Man and the Wasp, I'm like, wait a minute, why is it not on Disney Plus? Didn't realize they hadn't mm-hmm. moved it on. That's it's actually coming, I think this this week. Yeah, I think Stars still has a bunch of Disney. Yeah, movies well, that's the other thing. If you want to watch this, here's the shitty part. If you want to watch, there's the one downside about doing the MCU rewatch and having Disney Plus is if you want to do the whole thing, you got to include the Spider-Man movies, and Marvel, Disney doesn't have the rights to the Spider-Man movies. They're on stars right now. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I don't know where they're going. We'll, I mean, we'll find out. So, so in a world, if you have a whole bunch of favorite movies, maybe just still buy them. <laughs> yeah. Just buy them. That's one thing that's cool about Star Wars. The entire Star Wars catalog is on Disney+. Plus. You don't have to worry about that. So isn't the Mandalorian supposed to be coming back? Mm-hmm. Mandalorian season two starts in October, I believe. When they supposed to be dropping all those Marvel shows, like the so, it sounds like they started filming them again, but it sounds like they're all getting kind of pushed back, and a lot of it is because they have to keep pushing back like, Black Widow. They were in like mid production and stuff. Yeah, they have to put. Well, they had to push back Black Widow because they couldn't release it, and so then they had to stop production on the shows. But then they can't really. I'm not sure. The only the downside that Marvel's gotten the problem that Marvel's gotten themselves into is because they have to release things in certain order. Like, you can't yeah. release everything until everything's ready to be released, right? So, I'm not sure when these shows are going to come out. 
Well, all I know is that the fall TV lineup is going to be super awesome this year. The fall TV lineup this year, who knows? I did see, like, today The Witcher just started reshooting. So a lot of the shows, like, in Canada, so it seems like a lot of productions are going to start going again because a lot of these countries are having, like, real low corona. Um, you know, they've done a good job of containing the coronavirus. Not in America, but uh, well, other places. Supporting everything in Canada. Well, and so what they have to do in Canada, here's the shitty part. They can't, like, go home to their family. So, basically, they were having to shoot for, like, six weeks straight. Because um, you have to come in, take the corona test, and then everybody, you know, they're all creating these individual, like, bubbles where everybody lives in one hotel and they only go to the mm-hmm. set and back and stuff, which, I mean, that's going to be kind of the way things are for a little while. But, uh, but yeah, they can't leave the country or else they have to be quarantined. And so they just are, are all li- literally living in Canada while they're making these shows. So I don't know. We'll see. It's going to, it's going to be strange how this actually, what this affects like going forward. Like if, if the movie industry or TV shows are going to be like, you know, it's going to be, it's much easier and faster. If we just do a, a eight week shoot, take no breaks and just knock it all out in eight weeks. Yeah. I mean, it might be do like, a, uh, do a Lord of the Rings and just record them all at once. I think you could see yeah. more of that. I think what will end up happening though, is you get less seasons because people, you know, people get burnt out more, so they're like, okay, I'll do five years of this, but then I'm done. But which actually might be better for storytelling in general. Instead of getting, you know, shows that run way too long, you get comp- just people knock them out of the park. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do like eight episode seasons, break it up over three seasons, call it good. I mean, I, honestly, at this point, Ryan, I don't even know what's going to, like, I don't expect anything anymore. I don't know what's going to fucking happen oh, with anything anymore. I. I mean, like my, my kids are, you know, they're they're starting their online school soon. Yeah. In a couple of weeks, and you know, they're they're both going to new schools. Yeah. And you know, like my son's starting middle school, and he was super excited because. Oh, that does suck. It's a literally a brand new school. They have a giant CrossFit gym, and my son, who's he's very athletic and very into. Oh sports, yeah, and he so. plays a lot of soccer too. This has probably been like awful for him. Yeah. Uh, well, he had the tournament this weekend. Uh, oh, so they still only, doing sports? Only one person uh, per player can go, uh, per family. So my wife is going, cause she, you know, obviously, because she can. She's the only one that can drive, and it's like an hour away. So they 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 get they have to wear masks everywhere except on the field when they're playing. Um, and there's like designated areas that parents have to stay in, you know, with it's with you know six feet and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, they they tested it like a like they did like a test tournament and nobody like had COVID or anything like that. So I mean, we'll we'll see how it goes, but yeah, I mean, they've well, we're kind of in the same boat. I mean, where our kids are doing well, not every district in Washington, but the King County is. Uh, you know, we're the biggest school district in fucking Washington state and we are all doing, uh, online learning. So luckily my kids are still in the same school. They're not, they haven't graduated yet to middle school or anything. So it's, I mean, it still sucks for them. They're not real thrilled about it, but I'm just hoping, you know, last year they canceled school so fast, um, canceled, you know, in school, like the online learning was, there was no, like no program. Like they didn't give us any guidance on what we were supposed to be doing. It was literally just teachers just throwing, like, here's a work paper. Yeah, we were getting some emails of stuff we could print out, and then they'd have Zoom calls once a year. And then we got mad at the teacher because we found out our daughter hadn't submitted any of her homework, and she, and, and, and she didn't say anything to us. And she's like, and, and she still passed her, but we're like, why didn't you say anything? She's like, well, you know, kids are having it real tough, too, so we're taking it easy on them. I'm like, okay, there's taking it easy, and then there's, like, no accountability at all. Like, come on. Yeah. like, Yeah. I mean, I mean like... One of my my son, he has to take Spanish this year. Ugh, that's like a... that. How am I gonna like? I I think get him Rosetta the, Stone. They're gonna give me a paper and I have to like guess that I'm yeah. saying it right. <laughs> yeah, that's a rough one. I mean, and that's the hard part. I mean, you know, this year like supposedly, and that was our biggest problem is like give us a checklist of things that you want us to go over or with our kids every day, and we'll do it. But. You know, we didn't want to be those parents who were blowing up the teacher every day because I'm sure they were just like, you know, they weren't ready to handle this either. But yeah. at the same time, just just give me a checklist. So this year was, they're, they're having, they have like four or five hours online they have to do every day 
Um, they're doing Zoom calls with the entire class while they're teaching and they're, you know, they mm-hmm. have homework and stuff. And we're supposed to be getting lists of like the things that they're supposed to be going over so we can follow up with them and help them at home. Because I mean, listen, I, you know, it's been a long time since I've been in school and obviously life is stressful in general. I mean, I'm not a person who's been able to distance at home. I have to go to work. So that's in itself is its own world of stress, but I want to make sure my kids can learn, right? I want to make sure my kids can graduate and they're not when, when things do finally, hopefully one day get back to normal, that they're not so far behind. The kids are be going to school till they're 22 because you know, of the Corona outbreak. So I will spend the time and I will help them learn. It's just been frustrating because we don't even know what they're supposed to be learning. And it's like, ah, well, and, and the thing is, like, they, they don't know what the long-term health effects are for corona or virus. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you know, you kids get it, and they're going to have heart problems and lung problems and, you know, liver problems for the rest of their life. And, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll do online school, and we'll, we'll do with it. I mean. No, I'm glad. Like, listen, I'm glad that. I, Georgia. Dude, I, I was going to say, I feel bad. I see some of these kids who are, who are terrified to go to school. Yeah, we talk, yeah, the pig to Georgia, the, the kid who put the picture of the schools completely crowded, and they're not making them wear masks. That kid gets suspended, and then, and now they have over a thousand people that are like uh, in here's, quarantine. Now here's because... what I love about Georgia. I'm pretty sure it's also Georgia that suspended a girl because she was wearing a sp- spaghetti strap tank top because it wasn't, you know, it was too revealing. Uh, but they also are the same schools who say, oh, you know, we can't kick kids out for not wearing a mask because it's a personal choice. You know what? Yeah. It's just, yeah. The hypocrisy in some places is out of fucking control. But, yeah, yeah I mean, here's the thing, man. We got to do what's safe for the fucking kids, at least for the kids. I get a choice to go to work or not, you know, kind of. I mean, I can't stay home, but I could just technically quit my job. These kids yeah. like don't have a choice. They have to go to school. So, and which and they need to go to school, but we need to do it safely. So if that means online learning, I'm very happy that my kids get to do it online, even though it is an extra it is it is definitely an added level of stress. But um, it's much better than oh, my kids yeah. getting corona. Oh, and and I'm I'm home all day. My wife is home all day. So yeah. it's like, you know, and my kids are getting to the point where they're just about. They walk next to each other and you just want to start stabbing Dude, each other. It is. Like, it, the the amount of sniping that they're doing lately, it just escalated. Well, um, it's. But, I mean, we have nowhere to go. Like, literally, like, the only time we, like, we just get out of the house and we just go drive in the car. And yeah, we just, we've. And that's all we can do. We don't, we can't, like, we, we don't go do anything. We just hop in the car and we'll just go drive for, like, 45 minutes. Like, let's we, just go direction you know they've opened up a few things here like a few restaurants you know they have minimum you know you can only do like 40 percent capacity and there's a few things they've done we've gone out to eat i think one time um we've uh pretty much the only activities that we've really done is so they've allowed groups of you can have i think groups of like 10 or less or whatever so we've got a couple groups of friends that we that we trust that you know hey they're not going out and doing crazy shit or if they were sick they would let us know immediately right and so we've got two groups of, of friends that we've just been you know when we're together it's under 10 people and we've hung out a little bit like outside or we've gone camping i mean that's yeah. about the extent of everything we've done i mean so that's we've done a little lot. bit more than you have it sounds like but not by much yeah that's what a lot of people are doing they're getting like they have like you know this family and this family and these yeah. are the only two that we do stuff with well, because we know they're not screwing around. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, and they're people that, that we trust. I mean, and also, also at the end of the day, you know, a bunch of us are essential, and we have to go out into the world. So it's like, here's the word. Here's the thing. You know, everything. You know, every everything that's happening right now is stressful. It doesn't matter if you get to stay at home and you don't leave the house. There's a, its own level of stress. Like if you're stuck in the house all the time, yeah, you don't have to interact with the world. But then everything outside seems like it's going to get you because you've been stuck in the house forever, right? Yeah. But if you're out in the world like I am, then you're like, you have to walk around these jackasses who look at you and they're like, they're not wearing a mask and they're, they're like disgusted that you are. And I'm just like, Fuck you. <laughs> put your goddamn mask on. Like, Jesus That's Christ. That's why I've just been staying home. That's why I got all this COVID weight now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just getting, we got a rowing machine. We're going to, we uh, it just came in yesterday. So we're going to set that up and I'm going to be doing rowing. 
rowing the rowing oh, machine nice. trying I'm just like yeah, I just it's... feel disgusting, honestly. I'll be I mean like my hair, I finally cut my hair well my daughter, my ten year old daughter cut my hair because uh I saw that. I was personally hoping that you were going to grow out the luscious locks like all the way down to your leg. To I was looking butt like cheeks. a guy on Outlander. I was looking like I had uh, my hair was like down past my ears. And I was talking, uh, was drinking my coffee. And my family was sitting in the living room. I said, you know what, Finley, it would be really funny if you cut my hair. Because um, we were just talking about it. Because I was trying to put my hair in it in and it was like the hair was getting all in the way and and yeah. so her eyes got like really big. She's like, I'll cut it. I'm like, we don't have any scissors. She's like, I got scissors. She runs upstairs and gets like her art scissors, you know, that are like the stubby mm-hmm. <laughs> like, art scissors. She's like, I'll do it. And I was like, all right, you know what? Whatever. Hair goes back. So we sat in the yard. But there's like some parts like right here. It's still like, they're like six inch long pieces of hair. Oh, nice. Back yeah, here. I was. I was cutting my hair. I I bought some clippers and I was having the missus trim my hair for a little while. Um, I basically had a full on. I mean, I got some hair right now, but I had like a full on mohawk for a little while where it was just like just this piece, and this was yeah. all shaved. And you could still kind of see it a little bit, but uh, yeah. Well, luckily for us, when we started it, actually, when the governor here was able said, okay, you can hang out with a couple people. One of the families that we do hang out with uh, is our hairdresser, so. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so they'll come over and we'll just kind of hang out and she'll cut everybody's hair in the back deck. It's great. That's I been... do not have that luxury, and I just it... I'm, honestly, I'm just I'm at home all the day. So it it's is. Not like I, have to, I don't have to go to work. We're on maximum telework. We're we're not even allowed to go into the office. So like, who do that's I got to look good for? I'll just wear a hat if I got to go outside. So. Yeah. Well, I have I have to actually go out, like I said, in the workplace, so I'm like, I got to do something with my hair. It's out of control, but it's it was pretty rough when the governor, before he lifted the, some of the restrictions, man, people were looking, I was out in the wild, in the world, and people were starting to look real shaggy, and I was like, man, it's yeah. amazing the things you take for granted when you, you know, just the everyday things that you can do, like going to movies, or going to, you know, to the mall, or just fucking doing anything, man. I just, like, I... We're- I would, I need to go to Home Depot or Lowe's, and yeah. my wife's like, "No, oh, we can't. They're just, you know, like we'll just we'll we'll just wait to do that project." Like, I just want to go walk around Lowe's and like look and like do you it. Know Put your mask on and just go. Do you guys have a, Do you guys have a mask mandate in your state? Uh. Uh-uh. So luckily, we have a mask mandate in Washington, and I, I won't lie, it does make you feel a little bit better. I think we do now. It makes you feel a little bit better when everybody at the store is wearing a mask. It's like, my problem is, is because I service businesses, that's you know, part of my job. Biz, a lot of the businesses can, a lot of them have defied the order. Um, they're risking massive fines, but they're just like, screw it. We're not going to, we're not going to wear a mask. So then I'm just like, come on, it doesn't help you. It's hurting me, man. Can we just, can we do something about this? Yeah. No, the, the worst one that we were um, driving past a grocery store and an old guy was walking out. And he was wearing just a, a kerchief, like, across his face. Mm-hmm. But it literally, the triangle, like, it covered, like, this. And, like, and it was just, like, flapping. Like, this whole oh bottom part God. was just flapping. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? That's not, that's not stopping anything. It was literally, like, it just, like, my barely f- went over his my mouth. My favorite, have you seen the people who were doing the, the, cro- the crocheted masks? But they're not putting, like, a filter inside of it, so it's just, like, you could see, like, right through it, and you're like, come on, man. What are you doing? Quit being an asshole. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Life is... Life sucks. I'm ready for some sense of normalcy, but, I mean, it's not going to happen for a while. It's just... It just sucks. You know what? That's what me and Ryan are here to tell you. Life just fucking sucks right now. And if you feel like your life sucks, it probably does. And that's okay. Because yeah. everyone life sucks. So it's not just you. It's not like, oh, what's happening? It's happening to everybody. The stress, the weight of not being able to do anything, yet still having to fucking work 40, 50 hours a week, and what, yeah. teach our kids, and like hang out with your family 24-7 all the time without being able to do things like go to a movie or go to a football game or go do anything is starting to wear on everybody. And it's okay. If you feel like you are drinking more than normal, you definitely are. I know I am. But you know yeah. what? Fuck it. We got to figure out some way to get through this year because it is the worst. 
Our leadership Dude. at the very top is a bunch of chimpanzees Wait, what, throwing poop le- at walls. What was that, Brian? Leadership? Literally, we have a, an arrangement of various monkeys in the White House flinging Dude. poop at things, led by an orangutan who sniffs his butt all day. I don't... There's no leadership happening. We... There's cool. just... I mean, maybe, maybe we'll get some new leadership at the first of the year, hopefully. But between now and then, God only knows what's going to happen. So between that, you could get coronavirus and everything you like is canceled. If your life right now is in trouble or on fire, it's fine. It'll burn out eventually, but just got to hang on. But everybody's life's on fire and it sucks ass. I fucking hate it. Don't develop... An alcoholism problem. Fuck you, don't you judge me or tell me anything I don't already know. And uh, just remember that if you do need to talk to someone, Brian and I are always here. We are. For any one of, your, or any, any one of our followers. If you just want to shoot us a private message and just yes. blow up some steam, you and, feel totally free And to people do. have. In fact, this episode was inspired by one such, uh, one such friend of the show who... Just is like, hey, my life really sucks right now, and it'd be real nice to hear you guys. And so here we are. Yeah. You know what? Fuck it. If we're the only thing they're going to get a handful of people through fucking 2020, me and Ryan will commit to doing more shows yeah. more often. We'll do a show every week. If, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not get crazy here. There's a goddamn pandemic going on. But we could at least do one every other week. <laughs> we can go back yeah, to that we'll, schedule. We'll do, we'll do more episodes than we currently do. Yeah, that's true, we, which is if, one every five months right now. Uh, We're vintage. We'll We're like, people just... Listen, I just needed one person to reach out to me and be like, I need you, okay? That's all I needed, Ryan. Yeah, and it <laughs> wasn't your wife, so you have I to. I just needed that. One time. <laughs> anyway, but uh, but yeah, but like Ryan said, we're our doors are open. We're all in this. I know we're tired of hearing this shit because we're not actually all in this together. Because there's a lot of assholes who are just living their lives totally, don't give a shit. But uh, some of us are in this together. Yeah. So we're here for you guys. We're we'll here together. And you know what, Brian? I think we have some some interesting stuff to talk about. That's not coronavirus. Oh, either. we did. I did have one. Uh, we want. I know we wanted to have our Mulan conversation. Do we want to have that real quick, and then we'll jump into questions? Yeah, let's do that. So I do want to, a couple of little nerd bits. Nothing too crazy. Um, you know, we're we are like everybody else, kind of watching to see how the movie industry ends up panning out. There's, uh, you know, I mean, we did talk nothing about movies for years at, at a time. So we very much love love our movies and uh, it sucked. It sucked that they have been all pushed back. We are going to have a massive schedule of movies for next year. Um, some really good ones. If we can all go see the theater, go to the theater. So a new movie every weekend. Next yeah. Year. And, and so a lot of us have been kind of waiting to see if what was going to happen. Like were the, were studios going to start releasing things to home video on demand at a premium price or were they, cause if some places already have the King of Staten Island has been one such movie. Um, Trolls World Tour became like the highest grossing on demand movie of all time, raking in some some estimates that made up to three four hundred million dollars, which is insane. Um, so you know what were studios going to do? We've seen AMC do these like deals and other people do these deals, but um, other than we just wait to see when Tenet's going to be released and Black Widow is a couple ones that I'm I'm looking forward to. Um, I think we are starting to see a little bit of people getting nervous and budging and having to recoup some of their costs. I think the first one to really blink uh, is is actually Disney. We're gonna be we're gonna be getting a, a two hundred million dollar major movie release that, from all intents and purposes, the critics who've seen it say it's good. So it's not one of these movies that's like eh, like Artemis Fowl, terrible movie. They're like, oh, we'll just dump this on demand and let everybody have it on Disney Plus, right? No, this is an actual like. Big budget and movie that Disney was really banking on to make a ton of money for them. And uh, they decided they were going to release it on September, I think, 3rd or 4th. I think it's 4th. It's Labor Day weekend. Um, now, there's been some confusion and some people kind of mad about it. So we're going to talk about that for a quick second. Um, so the confusion's been that a lot of people believe that they have Disney Plus, they're getting Mulan. That is true and not true at the same time. You have to have Disney Plus to even have access to Milan. So they're not going to be streaming this like on your Apple TV, like your, you know, your rental, however you stream, you know, if you want to rent a movie, iTunes or whatever, you're not going to be able to get it through there. You have to actually have a, a Disney Plus subscription to even watch it. Now, once you have that subscription, 
when it's released, it's going to give you the option to pay $29.99 to buy it. Now, all intents and purpose, purposes, you are not you are purchasing this movie. Now, it doesn't show up in your iTunes collection, but what it does do is Disney is, once you pay the 30 bucks, you now officially have this movie on Disney Plus for as long as you have Disney Plus. So, um, when you buy it once, you're not going to have to buy it. You don't have to, have to pay for it again in two weeks if your kids really love it and they want to watch it again. Um, or like in six months or when it, or when it's released again to buy, you don't have to, you know, you're not gonna have to wait seven more months for it to be released on Disney plus you have it, you own it and you can watch it many times you want to. So, um, I don't know what, so what do you think about this? I have some thoughts about this model. Me personally, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited for this movie just because I've been really waiting for a big, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have a big budget movie to watch, even if it's at home. Yeah. And, and, it's going to cost less than it cost me to take my home family to um, a movie theater. Yeah, and that and, and that is exactly the other point. Popcorn, candy, you know, you're going to eat dinner out. So now we can just buy $20, $30 worth of pizza and get some snacks at Target for like a dollar. Yeah. And uh, pay for the movie and we'll still be, you know, saving ourselves money. Yeah. Or, you know, it would normally probably be like a hundred plus dollar a night, you know, going out and doing all that. And to be to honest, like sixty. Part of the reason why I bought a really nice, a new surround sound system and a bigger TV is because I kind of thought this is what was going to be happening uh, here, <laughs> coming soon. Yeah. Is a lot of these movies were going to start to be more and more things are going to be released on demand at home for a higher price. Um, you know, me and me and my wife, we rented uh, Invisible Man a few few months ago for twenty bucks because. We wanted to go see it in the theater. We didn't really have a chance to because just it was busy and then Corona hit. And we were like, well, I guess we're not going to be able to see it. And then they released it. So it was actually really nice. I didn't mind paying $20 because that was a movie that we were going to spend 15 bucks a ticket to go see. Now, I yeah. do enjoy the experience of seeing a movie. I love the big screen. But that being said, 30 bucks for a family film. I and mean, we're going to turn out all the lights. We're going to make it like a theater. We're going to get popcorn Jeez. and the candy, like you said. And we're going to make it like it's a movie night. And we're... I, I, when I told everybody we were going to have to stream it, nobody gave a shit that it wasn't in the theaters. Even my wife was like, 30 bucks, I'll gladly pay that. She Even she's excited to see like a movie movie, yeah. like a real movie that you would see in the theaters. You get a chance to see it. Because I love Netflix, but I can only watch so many made-for-TV Netflix movies before I'm just like, uh, I just want a real big movie. Just give me something like important and awesome. Can, Netflix only has, when they have that top 10 thing now, and there's yeah. only like, one show that you're like mildly interested in and yeah. everything else you're like why the hell is everybody watching because nobody has anything stuff. to watch anymore because we've all watched everything there's nothing left to watch so uh, you know i don't know so I, I there's been a lot of people who are really upset they feel like they're already paying for disney plus and they shouldn't have to pay another 30 dollars. but here's the way i look at it and and if you're watching this and you're one of those people hey that's your opinion and you're totally you have the right to have it but think of it this way if you like big movies if we all like star wars movies if we like these 200 million dollar epic like crazy things that you've never seen before Jeez. yeah all these movies that like you're like we didn't see this when i was a kid yeah because when you're a kid movies couldn't make the kind of money they can make now the only way we keep getting these movies is if people pay to see them and you know mulan is already been pushed back so far they can't just dump it on disney plus they've they've already invested so much money into this they have to get a return and not just that disney has been just hemorrhaging money and i know we all like to sit here and say oh boo hoo hoo corporations but like we all like the things that disney does we all like disneyland we all like you know star wars marvel movies we all like these things and Disney somewhere i've heard some they've lost like four billion dollars already or something this year yeah the when one hundred percent of your business model is yeah. on entertainment, <laughs> yeah, entertainment, and you know, and eighty percent of your revenue comes from cruises and like your parks, Yeesh. yeah, that are completely and, shut down. Yeah, so listen, I don't mind shelling out some cash. Disney's still gonna not make what they wanted to on Mulan, but if it can help them to recoup some of the money so they can continue to make more movies that I like to watch, and on top of it, supposedly Mulan is really really good. 30 bucks to me is a cheap price. I mean, 
if they release Black Widow tomorrow for fifty dollars, I wouldn't be like I'd I would I would immediately rent it because I was gonna spend at least that in the theater. And not just that, I want to see more Marvel movies. So here's your money, Disney. Just let me see them. And I don't expect them. I, listen, Disney Plus, we've gotten used to things like Netflix just giving us things. But most of the things Netflix give us aren't really that good. We just like them because they're free. <laughs> You know, they come with the service. Here's the thing. If you want, if you just only want free streaming stuff, then get used to mediocre YouTube channels yeah. that are trying to produce movies. Because that's what you're going to end up with. Yeah, I uh, mean. You have to put money into these things and these, and they have to be able to recoup that money somehow. Yeah, and so, there's only a handful of things on it's Netflix. It's going to be me sitting here going, and I'm now the star yeah. of the what? next Avengers movie, me. Hi. Or you're going to get a lot of horror movies because you can make them for $2 million. And that's yeah. all you know, and that's all you're going to get. So I I don't mind paying, you know, Disney Plus, they give you, you pay your $5 a month. You already get a ton of value. So for the people who are saying, like, I already pay for Disney Plus, yes. And you get all the Star Wars movies. You're not paying for the actual value that you get. Yeah, there's <laughs> Disney Plus, honestly, of all the services, I know they don't have a lot of new stuff. So it's kind of kind of a weird middle ground for them but they have a they have by far the biggest catalog of ip like in the world and they give you a lot of really good stuff like you get all the star wars movies you get everything ever made for star wars and i know star wars may not be everyone's favorite but if you go to the animated they, they've always had the national geographic stuff on there and we honestly just discovered it well and like when they give you a show national yeah stuff on it. there's some really good national geographics and when they give you um and like a cartoon and animated show they give you every season of it like you don't just get the first yeah. season of x-men you get every season of x-men you have every single season of the simpsons right now available if you want to watch it on disney plus so I think Disney Plus has a lot of value. I do like free things, and I, I wouldn't be mad if they gave us Mulan for free. But I totally understand why they're charging 30 bucks for it. And I actually, I applaud them. They could have easily done what Trolls World Tour did and said, it's 20 bucks, you get to watch it for 24 hours. And if you want, if your kids are screaming at you and, and they want to watch it again, you got to pay another 20 bucks. At least yeah. Mulan is saying, like Disney's saying, hey, here's Mulan, it's 30 bucks, enjoy the experience, and you get it forever, as long as you have our service. And I think that's pretty. I think that's a pretty good deal, honestly. It's it's you like I said earlier. You you're gonna spend less money renting this movie if you're gonna have a family movie time. You know, obviously, you could just move on. Um, you're gonna spend way less money just ordering some pizzas or ordering some Chinese food and watching this movie. I mean, you can now, still you're still gonna be able to get that family event that you wanted. Yeah. Now you don't have to leave your house. I mean, yes, if your TV sucks, then, you know, maybe it's not great for you. But I saw you looking over your shoulder, Ryan. Do you have a shitty TV? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Uh, so, we're, if the next <laughs> stimulus checks come through, oh, uh, I've, never, already been, I've, I've already got my eye on a TV. So, uh, uh, just for that. Listen, I didn't know if you heard this, but apparently our fearless leader has spent all the stimulus money on new... Uh, makeup for his face to cover up. Yeah. So, so I don't think you're getting any. I'm sorry. They're going to just make sure it doesn't get caught like on the collar of his shirt and stuff. Uh, anyway, moving on. Yeah. So there, I mean, will this be the future? I don't know. I do think the longer this goes on, the longer movies get pushed back. There will be some studios. I think the really, really big ones, the Black Widows, the Tenets, um, the Top Guns, the Wonder Womans, the ones that they know are going to make a billion dollars, they're going to have to yeah. just eat it and hold on to it. But I do, I do think you're going to see a lot of studios start like, okay, we've got to start bringing in some kind of revenue. So maybe let's find a movie that could have been, a, you know, like it's like a hundred million dollar movie that we think could be good, and let's push that out and see what happens. Um, anything that's a small budget is absolutely going to be put on VOD. Um, leads me to the next, the next big VOD movie that's going to drop that I know I'm going to pay for. Uh, Bill and Ted face the music. So Bill and Ted's excellent adventure part three has yes. been moved up to August 28th. I really, I really hope that they're going to make like one and two, like a package thing. I already own one and two, so buy I don't need to worry and, about it. I mean, I'll buy one and two and then buy the three. I'm really excited because my oldest daughter who's 10 somehow found my Bill and Ted's excellent adventure on, uh, on my, on my voodoo account or on my Apple TV account. And she's like, ooh, what's this? And she just watched it, and she comes to me. She's like, Dad, have you seen this movie called Bill and Ted? And I'm like, <laughs> Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? She's like, yeah. Were they getting like an, an, I don't know what it is. It's like a booth thing. <laughs> and I'm like, and they go back in time. I'm like, 
oh my god i was like you are my child and i give her back. i was like yes i was like did you know there's a sequel what <laughs> so we're actually going to and so i had to save it death. <laughs> yeah I, I haven't heard the heart to tell the sequel's not as good but uh i'm really excited we're gonna actually when bill and ted's uh face of music comes out me and her are gonna have a, a a dad daughter bill and ted weekend i'm gonna try and get the whole family on it but we'll see but we're gonna watch the first two and then we're gonna pay for the on demand so i'm i'm actually i'm actually like i said I'm just excited that we are actually going to get some theater quality movies that we can pay for at home, man. I've really missed going to the movies. I really missed those movies coming out and being big and only you can see them at like at, at a certain time. It's a, it's like a, it's a moment, right? It's not something you can just do whenever you have to just you have to sit down, you pay for it and you get it. And I'm excited for it. I don't know. Yeah, We, we knew this time was coming um, that they're going to start doing like movies that either like a simultaneous release in the mm-hmm. theater and at home, just because, you know, like you, you were saying, you got a brand new, awesome surround sound system. What, yeah. What's going to motivate you to go to the theater, you know, and instead of just waiting for, you know, so you can just watch it at home. Well, so we kind of knew this, this was coming down the pipeline. I think all this COVID stuff, it just did. It's just yeah. done with Milan. And now with Bill and Ted, and we're going to, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more movies. Maybe not Wonder Woman. Because that's a big one. Yeah. But maybe not the triple A movies, but maybe you know, the double A movies. I definitely uh, think I definitely think it's gonna be I think the new I think the new model is going to be they're in theater for a month and then they're on VOD at home for twenty bucks. So gives you an opportunity those who wanna see a movie in a theater can go or maybe if you're like us or parents and like you're like, I wanna see this week one, but then it's week four and you still haven't had a chance to go see it. Fuck it. You yeah. know what? Let's just pay twenty bucks and we'll Make the kids go do something else, right? That's so what I would do, and yeah. I would I would be able to see a brand new movie that came out like within the month. And you know, but I, it, but you still want that opportunity to see the Star Wars, the Marvel movies, the Wonder Woman's, the big you know the yeah. tenets. You want to see the Top Guns. You want to see those in theaters, and I think you still will be, be able to. So I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I don't know. Let us know. I, I, I'm I'm anxious to hear everyone else's thoughts. I know a lot of people are mad about it. I think that they should relax and I think a lot of people that are mad don't actually pay for their Disney plus subscription anyway. So whatever. Yeah, we'll thankfully none of, nobody's asked about my uh, Disney plus account. So, yeah. well they might, if you, I mean, and that's the other thing. People might actually share more Disney plus accounts. Cause if I buy it, I could technically give you my password and then you could watch Mulan, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to do that because I want Mulan to do well. And I already give yeah. you enough, Ryan. All right, moving on. We ran a little long, but I did want to bring that up. I know a lot of people, I've talked to some people who had a lot of questions. Yeah. So I figured that is one something that we're, we know a lot about. So we figured we talk about it. So uh, we actually had some some people who wanted to ask some questions this week. Yeah, so every day of the recording, I'll put up a post um, on our Facebook account. And I'll just ask you guys if you just you want us to talk about something, you can drop it in the comments. You can make a movie, do it, whatever you want. Just let us know. We'll talk about it. Um, and our two top fans yes. uh, decided to give us something to talk about. So Yeah, and why they're top fans are actually literally top fans. They have little cool icons that say top like fans a, on Facebook. Diamond next to them. Yeah. And a top fan. If um, I've had some people ask me, like, hey, I've commented a lot. How come I'm not a top fan? Just remember, you have to – it gives you the option. It says you're a top fan. You have to turn on the badge. It'll give you the option to turn on the badge. Only you can do that. So if you turn on the badge when it gives you the option of turning it on, that you're, you've you been recognized as a top fan, then you can let the whole world know that you are a top Geek Dad Report fan. What also helps is that if you click um, Contribute and you do a donation – uh, that, that, uh, we we're selling badges for the low sum of 100 corona bucks yeah. and uh <laughs> you can have one you may not have you may have only posted one time but for 120 dollars you can be a top fan well so. i mean christine gets to be a top fan because she sends me cool masks coronavirus masks she sent me a cool star wars one and then she just sent me a really cool comic book one with like thor on it and jeff He's our other top fan because you know what? He just, he actually cares. So he's a top fan because he has blackmail on Ryan. And he told us that if we don't make him a top fan, he will immediately release it to the world. And the, Jeff, Jeff known me since middle school. So, you know, I don't know what it is, but the look of sheer terror on Ryan's face told me everything I needed to know about it. So, uh, Jeff, if you could send me that blackmail in the mail, I have to see it. I'll promise to send it back, but uh, I got to know what this is. 
All right, so, so what do we got? Speaking of Jeff, uh, his question for us tonight, uh, with some college football conferences canceling their seasons, I think it's just Big Ten and Pac-12 as of tonight, yep. um, and some are postponing their seasons until the spring, do you think the NFL is more likely to postpone or cancel their season now? Absolutely not. The NFL is 100% going to plow through – the, it, I think it would actually take like entire teams dropping before the NFL even re, even thought about considering postponing the season. Yeah, that's, I think that's pretty true. That the they will at least go at least a couple of weeks. Yeah, you know, just to see how how everything is going. Um, but like you said, unless like everybody just starts dropping like flies. Uh, the the NFL is just going to keep pushing through. I mean, here's uh, the here's the thing between college and the and the NFL. Now, first of all, I like to say I know it's a kind of a <laughs> topical thing right now with the with college. A lot of people are very angry that college is uh, canceling games. I think with college, they are still technically considered amateur student athletes. Um, mm-hmm. There's a couple things going on. One. If the colleges force these kids to play like they're doing in the SEC and the ACC um, and the I think with the Big 12, they yeah. – I don't think you can call them amateur athletes if you were basically forcing them to go to work in probably the most dangerous coronavirus sport. Yeah. Full stop. So I think there's definitely some hypocrisy there. Um, but that, that being said – these are kids, and you it is your job to protect them. And I know a lot of people say, well, the kids want to play. Well, of course the kids want to play, but that's not their call. As yeah. an institution, you have to protect your students. Unfortunately, you can't quarantine them off completely, especially if you tell them, like, hey, we're going to put in a bubble and you can't do anything. Well, then once again, then they're no longer amateur athletes. That They're basically calling them employees and controlling their lives. Yeah. Uh, then, hey. So I think college sports are in a weird quandary but i do think the right thing to do is to cancel it because we don't know the long-term effects of these kids right especially does it suck for like the seniors does it suck for a lot of the kids who uh, hope to get drafted in the nfl absolutely but this could affect their long-term health forever it could end their nfl career if they get coronavirus right so i i just i think you have to do the right thing with 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 colleges if colleges are not having classes if they are not if, the, if it's not safe enough to bring the students back to study, you cannot make these kids play football. And just remember, if you're if you're a college kid and you're worried about your draft or anything like that, um, The Rock just did purchase the XFL, yeah, yeah. and I think they're they he, they're talking about making it like a bubble like thing, and so you just go sign with The Rock and, and go I, join that. Dude. And I personally think this program down, I think the SEC, I think these programs that are continuing, it's going to be disastrous, man. I think you're going to hear a lot of stories. You're going to hear a lot of stories coming out of these kids who got sick and they didn't report it, who, you know, I mean, kids are much less likely to report these things than like NFL players because they're professionals. They're getting paid. They're like, hey, this is my career. You know, kids who are trying, who have nothing to lose maybe, but they have everything to gain if they can get into the NFL or if they can be a good college athlete. You know, they're going to push it. And, you know, I don't know. I don't necessarily trust all these institutions that have their players' interest, best interest at heart. So, I don't know. But just remember, uh, this generation is a generation of narcs. And um, <laughs> yeah. their teammates are going to just let everyone know when somebody's doing what they're not supposed to be doing. Yeah, I so. mean, like I said, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I, I'm I, not happy sports are being canceled. I really like, you know, I mean, I'm not I'm not big as a college football fan as I am a, a NFL fan, but, I mean, hey, you dubs my, my school, man. That's my, that's not my alma mater, but that's what I root for, and they ain't playing football this year, and that sucks. But I'm going to miss being able to watch the Huskies beat the crap out of the Cougars every year. I mean, this is – yeah, the that annual was, Cougar beatdown. Every football season. I mean, I guess the only good news is I guess the uh, the Cougars aren't going to take another L in the Apple Cup. So, uh, but I don't know. We'll see. I mean, hey, if a vaccine can come out, if they can find a safe, if, if maybe somebody can come up with, maybe the SEC schools come up with a model that they show it's completely safe for the students. They're not going to, but let's say let's say hypothetically they figure it out then I'm sure these other schools are going to start back up. But And I'm sure the NFL is going to figure it out with the draft and everything else. 
I don't think these kids are just going to be left in the wind. I think the I think the NFL scouts are good enough to know like, hey, these these kids were going to be NFL players and they're going to know. But I mean, it does suck. It does suck. But uh, but as far as the NFL goes, you have to answer your question. Here's well, the difference. They think they're they're going to be well rested. Yeah. And and like I said, you can always join it, the XFL. Yeah. So. And you know, and I, I could see a supplemental draft. I could see you know, I could see the combine being a big thing. I, you know, there's a lot of ways I think these kids can find their way to the NFL or, you know, to continue to play sports. Hopefully, the NCAA will relax some of the rules and allow maybe seniors to repeat to come back and play one more year if they want to, like fifth. You know, give them like an extra year of eligibility. Um, you know, I, there there are ways to make things right. So hopefully that happens. But as far as the NFL goes, here's the deal. It is a nine billion dollar a year business that most of their money, well, a good, I, well, most of their money comes from TV revenue. So, um, as much as it sucks not being able to have people in the stands, that's not going to matter. Is these guys have got to get their pro? They're, they're, you know, there's too much money on the table to lose um, by not airing these games and getting them on TV. And with nothing else right now that we can watch, the ratings on the NFL football season are going to be the biggest they've ever had ever you're gonna have a monday night game versus the jets in jacksonville pull like a 30 spot on monday night because people just are just excited to see football again yeah it's it's gonna be uh interesting to see how it all unfolds some teams are starting to get some cases and and stuff like that but they seem to be kind of keeping well under the players here's the other thing that's really important is what the way the contracts are set up in the nfl the the money the salary cap it is a revenue sharing venture with the owners so all mm. the players have a vested interest in everyone being able to play because if, if they can't play then that means there's less money in the pot that means everybody's salaries next year are going to be in the toilet so mm-hmm. the players are i think most of the players are going to do the right thing and and stay out of crowds or, and and you know they're going to do a lot of testing and i think everybody involved they're all professionals they're millions of dollars on the line i think they all know what's at stake and so i think you're going to have some players opt out and i do think you're going to have a few you know runs of coronavirus but i do think the nfl is going to find a way to kind of keep it in as much in check as they can because i think everybody knows what's on the line here and i think if they can kind of contain themselves not go out stick to just their families and playing sports and their, in their facilities, but it is a long season. I could see them postponing like the playoffs by a couple of weeks of making sure everybody's, you know, healthy. I could see, I could see the Super Bowl instead of being in one week, be three weeks later, just to make sure everybody on both teams are healthy when they play. Um, I don't think it's going to be the same thing and we're definitely not going to get fans, but I do think the NFL, there's just too much money on the line. I, I could see them expanding the rosters to 80 just to make sure they have enough players in case, you know, half your team gets sick. Well, and, and they can't do the NFL thing. They can't do a bubble. I mean, they're yeah. just like you're saying. There's going to be there'll be like right now they have 90 guys on the on the teams before they start making their cuts and stuff. There's 90 yeah. people, coaches, yeah, uh, staff, administration. You know, they they can't have. Listen, they're going to get they're going to get cases. <laughs> you I know. Guess. 300 people per team in a bubble area. They, they can't do that for the NFL. It's just, there's just way too many people involved. No, no, there's way too many people. I just think with the amount of money involved, I just think people are going to, oh, not too. I think so. the people are going to be much more like, I think this is the year you're going to see a lot of players like, you know what? I'm taking this more seriously. I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to go to the store. I'm going to have my shit delivered. I'm going to stay home. You know, the, Hey, make no mistake. There's going to be Corona cases that break out in the NFL. I'm my biggest fear is that there's going to be a coach or somebody who dies because a lot of the coaches are 70 years, you know, 60, 70 years old. I got Pete Carroll on my team. I hope he's put him in a bubble. He's going to chew the coronavirus like he chews his gum. So, but no, I mean, I think, I just think it's too much money. I think it's too much money and too many people want this to happen. I don't think it's going to be like anything we've seen. Obviously we have no preseason. It doesn't even feel real that we're supposed to have games in a month. All right. It's, and I hope the product's not hurt because what happens if, you know, it, it's not as much fun if me and Ryan, you know, he loves the Steelers, I love the Seahawks, if, if they play each other and we just talk all this shit, it's not fun for anybody if all of a sudden we show up and half of Ryan's team is out because of the coronavirus. Oh, great, yeah, <laughs> we won, but you we played your, like, third string, you yeah. know, linebackers yeah. because they all got coronavirus. They, they had to activate uh, 20 practice squatters. 
So, I mean, the season could be, you know, and I got a, I got like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. What happens if half my line gets hurt? Put in Geno Smith. Take out Russell Wilson. I don't want to be a cream because, you know, we're playing a bunch of backups. So, I think this year could definitely be an interesting year. It's going to be the war of attrition. I think the healthiest teams are going to be the ones that probably win the most games this year, which, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Yep, thank you, buddy. Uh, see, so next up we have Christine. Uh, this is going to be a long Brian rambling question, just so everyone knows. So, um, she says, so we know that she just watched all the Star Wars movies for the first time. And let's see, so she said she's seen four, five, and six as a kid and, in the early 90s. She was a kid in the early Oh, I guess that makes sense. We were, yeah. I was going to say, like, what is she, like 18? But, uh, She's forgotten um, pretty much everything, and she just finished The Mandalorian. Ooh, good call. And uh, she read the timelines was supposed to be five years after Episode 6 and 25 years before Episode 7. And she asked Brian why no one seems to know what the Force is when there have been only five years. Um, do you want to do that before we go to the second part of the question? What's the second part of the question? Um, the second question is that at the end, when baby Yoda shows the power to, uh, burn up the stormtrooper, uh, green Karga says something about the ancients talk about the force. She doesn't get that. Um, yeah. So, it, okay. So I think it's I, all kind of one question. Okay. So, so basically it's been, it's only been five years. So why did everyone forget about the forest. All right. So I will try and answer that the best that I can. Um, first of all, before I get started, I'd like to say, Christine, you're awesome. I'm very proud of you for going through all the star Wars movies in order and then watching the Mandalorian. Um, welcome. I know, I know it's probably hard at times, especially with the prequels. Oof. There's some real bad dialogue. It's hard to get through some of those, but uh, I hope the, I hope the journey was worth it for you. Um, and welcome, hopefully welcome to the, uh, a broad, you know, wider world of Star Wars fandom. You're always welcome here. And Brian's arm, well, it's a testament to Star Wars fandom, so. Yes, you can join me. We can get matching Star Wars sleeves. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, okay, so here's, here's, to your point, it doesn't quite make sense. I will give you that. So I'm going to try and explain it the best way that I've heard it explained to me with knowing full well that even with the per perfect explanation, it's still like, come on, really? But here's the deal. So don't think of it like five years. Think of it like 40 years. So when when the original, when the when the Jedi fell to Sidious and uh, you know, to Palpatine and Vader, one of the things that, that the... One of the things that, that happened was they basically went through and they tried to erase all existence and any knowledge of the Jedi period. And so anybody who was a force user was, was taken or killed. Um, all the, you know, all the, all this, all this, the, the statues, the, everything that was, you know, there to remind people of Jedi were torn down the history books. They were erased from the history books. So, you know, and that all happened right after episode three. So you, and then it was what, 20 years till, the New Hope, so 20, 40. So you're looking probably about a 30-year span. So over those 30-year spans, you've had entire generations of people who've born who you don't know anything about Jedis because there are no Jedis. And anybody who talks about the Jedis are taken by the Empire or killed by the Empire. Basically, you know, Jedis basically became like a word that could get you killed if you were talking about the Force or talking about Jedis. And honestly, because there was no one there to train Force users – People who had the Force would probably just think that something was weird about them, or they were magicians, or the or the you know the Empire came and scooped them up. Um, there's been lots of stories told, video games told, uh, made that explain that hey, you know, Vader would go and kidnap any Force sensitive children and turn them into Inquisitors. Now nobody knew much about Anakin. Um, nobody knew much about, uh, about Palpatine and most of them didn't even know they were force users outside of a few people inside that group. Right. So yeah. even the people in the real world, maybe they had seen a Jedi. Now remember there's only, you know, there's only say a thousand Jedis in the entire universe, even during the, the old, the old time. So 
if you have a ton of all these people and there's only a handful of Jedi's really, there's still probably people who think Jedi's are legends and not really real. So you have to look at it from the gr- grand galactic scale to start out with. There was only a handful of Jedi's and only so many people even knew what the force was at all. And then you move on. Then, then the, you know, the empire put out an entire propaganda campaign to eradicate the Jedi completely from, from all known recordings in existence. And over that 30 years, there's plenty of people who had no idea. And even if you were a kid during the empire, during when, you know, the, the Knights of the Republic or the, um, you know, when the empire rose to power, Maybe you saw Jedi. Maybe you didn't even know what that was, though. You saw a lightsaber and somebody do a flip and you didn't realize that, like, oh, they're trained in the Force. We all know what the Force is because we've had a passenger view of a story about Force users. But most average people in the galaxy wouldn't have had that experience um, yes. with the Force. And, and since it's been completely eliminated from history, even Rey barely knew about the Force. She'd heard about Luke Skywalker as, like, a legend. Oh, the Force, it's true. Han Solo's like, I don't believe in that mumbo jumbo, right? I mean, even even when Vader on in, in the first in New Hope, you know, the guy's like, you know, don't, you know, the, the Admiral, was it, Moti? He's like, don't scare me with your sorcerer's ways, Lord Vader. Like, he's totally mocking the fact that he's a Jedi. And, you know, yeah. Vader has to remind him that he actually has powers. And they all seem, like, shocked that he's actually able to choke him. So, even people closest to Vader didn't quite understand what he was. So, you know... It's, I get it because I think in our, in our world, if we heard about these people who could use magic powers, everybody would know about it. But in the Star Wars universe, most people didn't even, even in the time of the Jedi, didn't quite know what a Jedi was, um, or how the force works. Cause I mean, Anakin, when he first meets Qui-Gon says, Oh, you're a Jedi senior laser sword, but he doesn't understand the force. He just understands that there's people who have lightsabers, right? Yeah, and can and do just things. Like, only heard it. It's not like he'd actually like you know studied it or yeah, you know, and he'd never like, seen it. Just about the Jedi or anything. It's just it's like you said. It's a legend. It's a lore. And even and that's when the good times for the yeah. Jedi. And that was and exactly and that was the good times. And that's in the outer range. So I mean, fast forward thirty years, you have this big bad empire who most people don't know. Only thing they know about the empire isn't that Vader and and Palpatine can hit you with force lightning. It's that they're going to send these stormtroopers to kill you is what they know. So especially if you mention Jedi or if you have powers, all of a sudden these kids who can lift rocks disappear, right? Nobody knows what it is. So my guess is, is that the reason why nobody in the Mandalorian knew about it is just because nobody knew about it. Right. And the few people that did it, like you said, I have heard of these magical beings that could do things. Right. And so anything at this point in the story, you know, so, you know, I, I heard the Mandalorian was seven years, but if, even if it was five, you're talking, you know, you're talking 35, 40 years after, after episode three. So in that time, just the forces, the idea of the force has been eradicated. And you have whole generations of people who have no idea what the force is. Yeah. And so, you know, and which is why even Luke, you know, Luke has to retrain Jedi. People don't know who Luke Skywalker is. He's a legend. He's, he's taking new people in to be, you know, to train them. At that point, Luke may be looking through the galaxy because at that point during the Mandalorian, Luke is looking to maybe start setting up a Jedi Academy. He's out looking for force sensitive people. It's not like he put out a beacon. Hey, the force is back. Come join my school. And even then in, in, in episode seven, he only had like 30 students. So it's not like there was just thousands of force users floating around the galaxy, just doing all these things. Like the force had to rebuild. The reason why they call it the awakening, the, you know, the force awakened is because the force was kind of dormant and a lot of, it had to be rewoken because it had been basically been exterminated throughout the galaxy. So anyway, some of it, yes, doesn't make sense to us because I think once again, we've watched these stories from, from day one. So the idea that people just wouldn't, understand that there's these fantastic beings who can do incredible things just seems crazy but if you look at it in the scale of an entire galaxy and how how few people actually could use and wield the force and how even fewer people knew what the jedis were like that they were a religion a very secretive organization of people you know that only took certain people in general and kept their numbers low you know you could see a scenario where people just wouldn't understand what it was I think you said it right when you when you said that um, we've we've only seen the viewpoint from the force users. Yeah. So obviously that's like for us it's like well why doesn't everybody else know about it? Mm-hmm. Well it's because we've only seen like you said a very secretive tiny religion. <laughs> yeah, I mean have, have an outside amount of power. You know, imagine you know we we watch Star Wars from Han Solo's perspective, and we're like this guy's never seen a force user, and all of a sudden he's like. Pfft. 
Is this guy talking about the Force? It's like it's a bunch of. It's like the Knights Templar. I mean, yeah. basically, you know, something exactly. like that. You know. And the Mandalorian, yeah. you know, he lived his whole life, maybe never ran across a Force user, has no idea what it is, and he just knows that this baby's got some weird powers. Yeah. So anyway. Well, Anyway, so that that is my that is my rambling explanation. I don't think I have any more to add to that. So if uh, if Christine, if you still have questions, feel free to hit me up um, offline. I'd be more than happy to continue to carry carry on this conversation with you. You know me; I love talking Star Wars. So my yeah. my DMs it's, are always open. Star Wars, just talk to Brian. Just talk to me. <laughs> it's true. Uh, cool, man. Well, I, you got anything else? Those were the questions that we had for uh, this coronavirus episode number three. Yeah. Well, I think that's, unless you got something else, man, I think that's the show. I don't got anything else to add. I, I think it's a good, we can put a bow. I already got. I already got my recommendation. I already gave my recommendation about that app. Once again, if you, if anybody forgot it, it's the Just Watch app or JustWatch.com. Uh, I also have one more recommendation. Um, now's a good time since we're all stuck at home to get caught up on books. I've been buying a bunch of books. Um, whenever I go to a local bookstore, I try and buy a book because I'm trying to help support local business. And I realize there's a lot of classics I haven't read. This is the latest one that i'm checking out lord of the rings i've never read it right now if you want to read lord of the rings there is a 50th anniversary collection that collects all the volumes in one book and brian was telling me earlier it it gives like details yeah like right now i'm still in the prologue because i'm it's giving a detailed accounting of the the lore of the hobbits and the history of the hobbits like, did you know there's three different types of hobbits? I didn't know that until I read this. Whatever. I haven't gotten to the, the ring yet. We'll uh, see. My recommendation is is also a book. I just can't find a dang thing. But uh, I picked up The Postman because mm. I was thinking Kevin about Costner in it? Day. I'm like, you know what? I think that was based on a book. And I went and I looked, and there's like $6 on Amazon. It was like, nice. sold. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a short book. It's not like a, you know, the spacing's really big. Uh, I, I, I read like for a couple hours one day and I'm already halfway done. Oh, nice. Uh, but I'll, I'll be doing a full review of that um, on GDR Reads once I can get the format right because I have not liked the reviews that I've done so far. Yeah, what, uh, Ryan, what Ryan's trying to mumble his way through is that Ryan has a new segment he's going to be releasing. Uh, well, we've done a few book reports before, but he's going to do a whole, he's going to try and, He's been knocking out books left and right, so he's gonna he's 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 lining up a whole line of reviews of books that he's read. So he's going to be getting that out eventually. It should be good. And if he doesn't, he's fired. Yeah, I yeah, know that's such a hard workforce that we have right now. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That's all. That's all I have to recommend. Read more books. That's Read all we books. can do. Educate yourself. All right. Well, I think that is it. That's a good place to end it on. Um, and remember, everybody, life sucks right now. If you feel like life has got you down, I we totally understand. Life does have everybody down. You are absolutely not the only one going through all this. So reach out to your friends. Reach out to your people you care about. And reach just do what you got to do. I think it's going to get better sometime early next year. But, hey, look on the bright side. We're already halfway through this year. It's already almost September ish. And we got some, you know, whatever. Yeah. We'll get through it. It'll we got Mulan fun. coming. We got Bill and Ted part three. I mean, come on. It's not all bad. Yeah. Brian and I will just start doing some contact sports. Yeah. yeah. Do y'all crush it. I'll be the best. Anyway, uh, until our next coronavirus episode, hopefully <laughs> we do these. Hopefully it'll keep away the coronavirus from everyone. Uh, Stay awesome, everybody. And stay nerdy, everyone. <laughs>